The name of the Lord is the strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. The Bible says, The Lord, my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God and my strength, whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Welcome to my brand new YouTube channel called My Family Dynamic. I believe in the human family. I believe that the family is the basic unit of all society. I believe healthy cities are built on healthy communities which are built on healthy families. I believe that family ought to be built up in the kingdom principles from the Word of God. I believe that we ought to be educated and understand that there's opposition. There's opposition to healthy families. There's opposition. Just look around. Look around you in your neighborhoods and where you live. Look around you at your work and you'll see the evidence of family opposition. Opposition to husbands and wives. Opposition to fathers and their children and mothers and their children. <clears throat> this opposition is a strategy. A strategy of an enemy to bring down our entire nation one society at a time as it brings down families one family at a time. So this sermon that you're going to hear that I'm going to begin this channel with is a sermon on redeeming covenant and the power of God that's available to bring about a redemption of covenant because there is an opposition, there is an enemy that desires to bring an end of covenant, that, that desires to bring a destruction to covenant relationships, husbands and wives, in church-going people, as well as the world. Covenant marriage relationships are designed to be a context, a context and provide an environment in which you raise and rear your children. Children are to be raised in this context that's healthy, happy, wholesome, full of peace and joy and love. Not some of the contexts that we're seeing today that are caused by the opposition to this covenant relationship. This does not allow children to have confidence, self-esteem, some of the other good qualities that they really need to make it in this world, to make it through high school, to make it through college with identity, to know who they are. So there's an opposition. There's an opposition to covenant relationships, which brings destruction of the next generation. Now, this sermon that I'm going to bring to you is a description of that as shown by the Word of God in the book of Judges. So hang tight and watch this, watch this sermon, and I hope you're blessed. I always like to lay a couple levels of foundation before I get started. One of the things that I want to say to you is, is that I, I in no way bringing up your past. I'm in no way wanting to use that as um, harm to you. How many of you would say that I'm in Christ? Yes. All right, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, right? Old things passed away. We learn from them. We are uh, brought to this place by that, but we are not defined by that. We are not, our future is not defined by the past. Uh, the scripture tells us that also that for any person that's in Christ, there's no condemnation. Judges chapter 9, verses one, starting at verse 1, And Abimelech, son of Jeroboam, went unto Shechem and to his mother's brethren and communed with them, and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all of the men of Shechem, whether it is better for you that either that all of the sons of Jeroboam, which are threescore and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. Shortly after that, he goes and, and this men that he's gathered with him, they, they plot and they kill. Those, they're, they're going after the 70 brothers. Not only does he say don't, you don't want to be led by these, you want to let the one reign instead of the 70, then he then turns and goes after the 70. He kills all but one. Jotham was the only one who remained. Jotham lived to, sp to speak a prophetic word against his half-brother. Verse 23. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dealt tre treacherously with Abimelech. This is the fulfillment of the prophetic word spoken by Jotham in this particular um, scripture. Then God sent a spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech and vice versa. As he's beginning to come against the people, he comes against the city. First he takes down the fighting men. Then he starts to come against uh, the, the people, the citizens, and this is where we are. Then all the men of the tower of Shechem heard of it. They entered into the chamber of the inner temple, or the inner chamber of the temple, El Bereith. It was told Abimelech that all the leaders of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. Verse 48. 
So Abimelech went up to Mount Zalman, and he and all the people that were with him, and, he, and, he, and they're cutting down sticks and trees, and they carry, and all the people, he instructs them to do exactly as he's doing. So they follow him and do exactly as he's doing. So verse 49, all the people cut down each one of his branch and followed Abimelech and put them on the inner chamber and set the inner chamber on fire over those who were inside, and all of the men of the tower of Shechem also died. About a thousand he men He comes against the women. city. He comes against the fighting men first. He destroys all of them. Next, he comes against the people, the citizens. Now, the citizens, the, our text tells us, they run into this stronghold, the stronghold called El Berith, or El Berith. This, this stronghold is significant, and this is the part that I wanna, want to really get the point across right here because, that, because there's a lot that happens now in the word Berith. Berith is, is, is defined, is, is a Hebrew word that's defined as covenant. covenant. So this definition of covenant ought to be broad, and it is. So covenant, alliance, or a pledge, it's a constitution or an ordinance, like as in monarchs to subjects. Uh, it's an agreement or a pledge, again, man to man. Alliance of friendship, alliance of marriage. Uh, between God and man, this thing has to do. Between God and man, an alliance, a covenant. It, it, it's, so it's all it's encompassed. Verse 46 and 47. They entered the inner chamber of the temple of El Berith. It was told Abimelech that all the men of the Tower of Shechem were gathered together. So if I, if I take Berith and call it what it is, these people were gathered together in covenant. If you just break the scripture down and say it as it reads, it, they were gathered together in covenant. And Shechem and his men proceed to set the thing on fire. Why as an enemy would I want to come against covenant? The stimulating question then is, why as an enemy would I want to take down covenant? Why would I want to disrupt covenant relationships? The internet calls this family disruption. But if I'm an enemy, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to disrupt family, disrupt covenant relationships? Some statistics I dug up over at the National Fatherhood Initiative, fatherhood.org, found that children in father-absent homes are almost four times more likely to be poor, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. Even after controlling for income, Youths in father-absent households still had higher odds of incarceration, according to the Journal of Research on Adolescence. And according to a Department of Justice survey of 7,000 inmates, 39% of jail inmates lived in mother-only households. Dover at FocusOnTheFamily.com found these staggering statistics concerning marital division and divorce. Children from divorced homes suffer academically, experiencing high levels of behavioral problems, and their grades suffer. Also, divorce is linked to a substantially higher rate of incarceration, amongst other negative effects like poverty and higher sexual activity, increased drug and alcohol use. But if I'm an enemy, why do I not want to disrupt covenant and continue perpetuation of pain? Pain, pass pain down to the next generation, down to the next generation, more pain, down to the next generation, more pain. Why would I not? So Abimelech comes to this place called Covenant where all are gathered and he destroys it. He destroys it. So Abimelech then comes to verse 50. In verse 50, the Bible reads that then Abimelech went to Thebes, say Thebes. So he comes to Thebes and he camped against Thebes and captured it. But. Everybody say but. So Abimelech comes to Thebes and he camps against it and he captures it. But. But there was a strong tower in the center of the city. If there's an answer. If there's no answer, there's a problem. If there's no answer, let's be silent. But there, if there's an answer, let's find it and let's rejoice in it, right? But there was a strong tower in the middle of the city. The name of the Lord is the strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. The Bible says, The Lord, my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, and my strength, whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Come on with it now. Come on with it now. 
For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. There is an answer. There was a strong tower in the middle of the city and all of the men and women and the leaders of the city fled there and shut themselves in. There is a place. There is refuge in the time of trouble. There's a place where you can go when all hells come against you and you can step inside and be full peace because he is the prince of peace, the one that in relationship with you can overcome everything on the outside because greater is he that is in you. Strong tower in the middle of the city. All the men and women and leaders of the city fled there and shut themselves in. They went up on top of the roofs and so Abimelech came to the tower and fought with it. He approached the entrance of the tower to burn it with fire and a certain woman, everybody say a certain woman, threw an upper millstone on Abimelech's head crushing his skull. Crushed his Hey, I hear some consistency in Scripture. You might bruise his heel, but he'll bruise your head. The tower in the center of the city is the head bruiser. There's no authority in heaven or in earth or in hell or under the earth that is above the name of Jesus. The strong tower, the ever-present one. I understand the enemy has come against covenant in your life and left you as a victim, but there is a place. I understand that there may be people in this place that, that the enemy is coming against covenant relationships, the relationship between you and your spouse, the relationship between you and your son, the relationship between you and your daughter, but there is a place. The strong tower in the middle of the city is the place where this spirit is crushed. He has crushed all authority of this thing that comes against covenant. He is crushed when he comes to the place in the middle of the city where the strong tower is. So there you have it, right from Scripture picture of an enemy that has an interest in bringing down covenant that is in opposition to covenant and covenant relationships whether it be that between a husband and a wife uh, bringing division between uh, sons and daughters bringing division between parents and children bringing division between us and God bringing division between covenant relationships in the body of Christ there is a clear enemy to covenant relationships. There's a clear enemy against oneness whose desire is to bring about separation and disunity so that there can be repercussions, repercussions typically that are seen in the next generation in our children that grow up with hurt and pain in their lives, that grow up with confusion, that grow up with lack of interest, lack of direction. So they're turning to things like drugs and alcohol. Uh, they're, turning, they're turning to violence and gangs to, to affirm themselves because of the hurt and pain that they feel. Our generation's numb. The generation is numb. They can't feel. So many cutters, teenagers, cut to feel something because they're numb, because of pain, because of hurt, and most times because of hurt concerning covenant relationships. But thanks be unto God, there is a place. In our scripture that we saw here just recently, Jesus is the strong tower in the middle of the sea. He's the strong tower that we're to run to for protection and safety. He's the strong tower that we're to run to when this opposition is coming against us and our families. And He is the place where we can run to find healing when we have suffered from the destruction of covenant, the destruction of anything. He's the place. Well, I hope you enjoyed this first video on this new channel. I know that I'm praying for families, praying for your family, all those who view this, that you may be one and harmonious and full of peace and joy and a healthy, functioning family in your home. In Jesus' name.